So the other thing that we want to talk about, because I just brought it up, was surge. So there's a big misnomer. People think, oh, I have a, we just use uh, round numbers just for making things easy. I have a 700 lift camshaft and my springs are good for one inch. So if you do the math there, that means that your distance between coil bind when the spring is all the way collapsed, like what you saw here in the spring tester where it goes all the way down to collapsed, that's coil bind where it's all the way together and where it's installed at. So uh, lift goes all the way down to 700 and you have 300 thousandths there and you're thinking, oh sweet, I got tons of room, I'm doing a great thing. No you're not. You're actually doing this wrong. Now you can get away with doing that on a lot, on most engines but the higher higher end higher performance stuff the the uh the better that engine is the more you need to start paying attention to some of these smaller things like what spring surge is what spring surge is is uh if you slow motion photography or actually high speed you'll see the spring collapse close collapse close well it's also uh if it goes into surge when it collapses and starts opening it kind of does this as it's opening and then does this as it's uh, opening does this as it's closing instead of nice smooth motion and what that's from is you have too much room you have too much room between coil bind so the best way of setting these up to set a spring up is to be usually a hundred thousandths max of coil bind height so you'd want it to coil bind at uh, 800 lift when you have a 700 lift cam. You'd want it to, co and ideally, you'd really want it to coil bind around 50 thousandths before that, which would make it, you'd want it to coil bind at 750 on your 700 lift cam. And what that does is, when the spring comes together, it's so close right there that when it tries to surge in the, in the transition between closing and opening, that it doesn't have any room to surge when it's got lots of room comes down here and makes a transition it has all this room to start surging and so when it's really tight and comes down close like that it creates a nice smooth spring movement when it comes down like this it can try to go past it and surge and get all funny and then try to open it back up so that's why you want to have your installed height 50 at minimum a hundred thousandths at maximum from what your peak valve lift is. So those are the two primary things that you want to know in your spring. Now as far as spring rates and what the uh, seat pressure needs to be, what the um, uh, over the nose pressure, or the spring rate, how much it increases, that's all dependent on your camshaft and your profile. So if you get stuff from me, I'm going to tell you what spring to use, I can sell you the right spring, whatever you want to do. Um, but a lot of that stuff is all involved also with valve weight and all your valve train. So this is the valve out of one of my SMX engines. This is actually a spring out of one of the SMX engines. This is just your common triple spring right here. So uh, everything all matters on what stuff weighs. And that's what uh, in, a, in the, a Big Chief style head or my SMX head, uh, most every head that would have, have a long valve and a really large head diameter always needs to be titanium. Why is that? Because the steel is so heavy you can't get the valve spring to control it well. So the lighter this componentry here, as long as it's durable, I mean you can make this valve stem, you know, uh, uh, NA stuff can go like 8 millimeter, uh, 5 sixteenths, uh, sometimes even smaller, 7 millimeter, but uh, in this long a valve and in this kind of uh, use, that's not practical. So uh, the, uh, we want to make this as light as possible. The only way of really doing that is with material. So that uh, lightness of valve helps combine with the frequency of the spring. But even if you just had a plain out heavy butt valve, the best way of doing it is always with a spring. That lighter sp frequency spring is doing the same thing as putting a lightweight valve in it. Same thing as in our hydraulic roller stuff, why you always see the beehive stuff. You know why you see beehive stuff? Smaller up here, smaller retainer, 
smaller uh, whole entire package up here which changes the frequency rate that's why there is a beehive spring this spring at the exact same same spring pressures as a double spring is better because it's lighter and has more availability to go back to its natural position easier so this is a much better spring so you can also run you'd have to really figure this out and this is tough and spin try and work and all those kind of things you can do um, you know if you want to get this down to using less spring pressure less spring and doing the exact same thing i.e. rods a little less horsepower so you guys are probably figuring that out oh maybe I could run less spring pressure with a better spring and get a little more horsepower yep you can boosted world really doesn't matter what we're looking for is maximum durability and what the best thing is uh, the five horsepower you gain from the perfect set of springs because they don't make as much horsepower or take as much horsepower to turn five horsepower is great there's a lot of math figured out in doing that it's gonna be really tough to do in the boosted world horsepower is not the problem making stuff live is always the problem always remember that but in the NA world that's obviously something that the you know pro stock complementary guys I'll work on really doing that and focusing on it cup whatever um, so that's all really interesting stuff that you're gonna find there um, but remember that on the valve spring the duels in a high high uh, high quality dual spring are always going to be better than a triple because of that frequency and then you want to set these up properly very close 50 thousandths to 100 thousandths max of your uh, lift to coil bind that way you're preventing spring surge you're making things right 